Hello friends, welcome to my first tutorial on how to build a beginner friendly and inexpensive 5 inch 4S LOS racing drone. We'll go over the steps involved in assembling the frame, installing the electronics, programming the stack using a smartphone and conclude the video with a test flight and scope for future upgrades. Let's get right into it without further ado. Let's take a brief look at all the electronic components needed to build the drone. We'll be using the infamous PDB F405V3 as the brain of the system. The Flysky IA6B is the receiver of choice for this build. This PDB BLS50A is an amazing 4-in-1 ESC that supports 3 to 6S LiPo batteries. We'll be using 2300 kV BLDC motors from Ready to Sky as the muscles of the build. These motors can support 3 and 4S LiPo batteries. The T-motor race wires are great for conveniently swapping motors without having to disturb the soldering on the ESC. We'll need a male XT60 pigtail to connect the battery to the ESC and the 35V 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor to filter out the power ripples. A cheap 5V active buzzer can be a very useful component to rescue your drone after a crash. To power everything up, we'll be using 100C 4S LiPos from CNHL that offer high performance. The very high discharge rating provides the extra power needed to pull off acrobatic maneuvers and recoveries after a dive. We can also use a 35C 2200mH 3S LiPo to fly around at cruising speed without pulling off aggressive maneuvers. The IMAX B6 is a good entry-level charger that supports balanced charging of 2 to 6S LiPo batteries. The E3 AC from Sky RC is a reliable solution to quickly charge up your 2 to 3 cell LiPo batteries. Before assembling the frame, let's take a quick look at the parts we get inside the package. A set of 4 3mm thick 5 inch long arms, a top plate of 1.5mm thickness, pair of 1.5mm thick bottom plates with provision to mount a 30.5mm ESC and flight controller stack, a set of 8 m 3 by 37 mm aluminium standoffs, a set of 4 landing feet that snap onto the arms, a plate for mounting an FPV camera, a vibration absorbing plate for mounting an FPV or action camera on top of the frame, a pack of M3x6mm screws, a pack of M3x12mm screws and a pack of high quality M3 lock nuts. Now let's proceed with the step by step assembly of the frame. Start by mounting an M3 spacer on one of the bottom plates with the M3x6mm screw provided with the package. Mount the rest of the spacers and tighten them by hand for now. Place the second bottom plate on the bottom face of the first bottom plate. Insert 4 m 3 by 30 mm screws into the holes of the ESC plus flight controller stack. Loosely secure the screws with normal M3 hex nuts such that there's some play between the two plates. Slide an arm between the bottom plates and align the holes perfectly. Insert 4 m 3 by 12 mm screws provided with the package into the holes. Hold the screw with an allen key and drive the lock nut into the screws to secure the arm tightly. Repeat the same steps for the rest of the arms and ensure that they are tightly secured with absolutely zero play. Hand tighten the stack screws with M3 hex nuts. Place the top plate on the standoffs and align the holes. Now secure the top plate to the frame with 8 M3 by 6 mm screws provided in the package. Our frame is assembled and ready to accommodate the electronics now. All we have to do is remove the top plate and proceed with the build. Let's start mounting all the electronics onto the frame by placing an anti-clockwise motor on the rear left and front right arms and a clockwise motor on the front left and rear right arms. Use M3 by 6 mm screws to secure the motors onto the arms. Fully tighten the screws but also ensure that they don't touch the windings of the motor. Stick a piece of double-sided tape on the race wires and attach them to the arms near the motors. Now let's use a low power soldering iron between 25 to 35 watts and join the motor wires with the pads on one side of the race wire. We'll do the same with the rest of the motors. It's time to remove the top plate and gently mount the ESC on the frame at its designated spot. Now let's use a high power soldering iron between 50 to 60 watts and join the XT60 cable with the power input pads on the ESC. It's important to pay close attention to the polarity during this process. Dismount the ESC from the stack screws and carry out a visual inspection of the soldering joints. Make sure that there is no bridging between the pads and we ideally want the joints to look like a smooth and shiny spear. These are indicators of a good electrical joint and it's crucial that we carry out decent soldering while building anything that flies. Now let's use a piece of 18 gauge wire to bridge the gap between one set of motor output pads with the race wires, going from left to right to maintain a one-to-one -one connection. 
It's good practice to use some isopropyl alcohol on the cotton swab to clean up the joints after soldering them. Routing the wires around the standoffs and into the frame gives a tidy look to the quad and also helps in protecting the wires from getting spliced during crashes. It's finally time to install the flight controller above the ESE. Note that the little arrow mark on the flight controller should be pointing forward. Use M3 nylon nuts to secure the stack onto the frame and ensure that you don't over tighten them such that the stack gets squished together. Tighten them just enough to keep the stack in place and provide adequate vibration damping. Now let's connect the stack together by plugging the 8-pin JST cable into its slot on the flight controller. Make sure that the cable is plugged in properly since this is a very important link. Our drone is nearing its end of the build process so it's time to take a quick look around and ensure that everything is in place. The 5 volt buzzer has a plus sign marked on its casing which indicates the positive terminal. Let's remove the sticker and connect the buzzer to the flight controller by soldering the positive terminal to the pad marked BC plus and the negative terminal to the pad marked BC minus. We'll be using the IA6B receiver on PPM mode to establish a connection with the flight controller. The PPM output of this receiver is sent out through the signal pin of channel 1 and it can carry up to 8 channels. Attach a piece of double-sided tape on the receiver and mount it onto the frame in front of the stack. Firmly press it down so that it stays in place. Now connect the receiver to the flight controller by joining the signal wire with the R2 pad, the power wire with the 4.5 volt pad and the ground wire with the ground pad. It's important that you connect the power wire to a 4.5 volt pad because it will allow the receiver to be powered up by USB itself. If the power wire was connected to a 5 volt pad, the receiver would only power up with a LiPo battery, which is not advisable as we will be carrying out most of the programming without a battery connected to the quad. We can now flip the quad over and find a suitable place to secure the antennas using some cable ties. Just make sure to snip off the excess right near the clamp to avoid getting insured by the sharp material. The electronics have been mounted onto the frame and all we have left to do now is to program the ESC and the flight controller mount propellers onto the motors and carry out the drone's maiden test flight. To bind a transmitter to the quad, plug the binding cable into the binding port of the receiver and power up the quad with a USB cable. The LED on the receiver must blink rapidly indicating that it has entered binding mode. Now press and hold the bind button on the transmitter and turn it on to finish the binding process. The LED on the receiver stops blinking indicating that the transmitter and receiver are bound together. To verify that the binding process was carried out successfully, remove the binding cable from the receiver and power up the quad again. Now turn on the transmitter and check if the LED on the receiver has stopped blinking and stays lit. We can now turn off the transmitter and disconnect the USB cable from the flight controller. Place the top plate back onto the frame and secure it with the M3 buttonet screws. Now secure a battery strap on the top plate by passing it through the slots provided in the middle. With this step, we are officially done with the entire build process and it's time to move on to the programming of the quad to be able to have a successful first flight. Connect the quad to a computer using a Type-C USB and power up the ESC using a 3S LiPo battery. Launch Google Chrome and open the ESC Configurator website. Click on connect on the top right corner and then click on read settings on the bottom right corner. Wait for all 4 ESCs to get loaded. Now click on flash all ESCs and select the firmware as BlueJ. Select JH50 as the ESC and choose 0.19.2 as the firmware version. Select 24kHz as the PWM frequency and click on flash. Patiently wait for all the 4 ESCs to get flashed and then we can go over some common parameters. Change the motor timing to medium and set DMAC compensation to low. Leave other settings unchanged and enable break on stop and set its maximum strength to 200. Ensure that all the motor directions are set to normal and click on right settings and wait for the ESCs to get updated. Now we can click on disconnect and unplug the LiPo battery. Turn on the transmitter and enable location and Bluetooth on your smartphone. Now launch this PDB app and follow the on-screen instructions. Our device has been detected and we can connect to it now. We'll skip adding a password and calibrate the accelerometer as the first step of our flight controller configuration. Now let's enter into expert mode and get into the ports tab. The only thing to do here is to ensure that serial RX is enabled on the UART that a radio receiver is connected to. In this case, UART 2. Don't forget to click on save and reboot after every major step. It's time to set up our radio controller so we'll head over to the receiver tab and set the receiver protocol to PPM. 
Let's change the stick low threshold to 1005 and stick high threshold to 1995. Let's also change the RC and your dead band to 5. Click on save and reboot and you should now be able to see the real time values of the various channels. Make sure that the sliders are in sync with the correct stick and switch inputs. Now let's head over to the modes tab and assign a switch to arm the quad and change flight modes. Click on add range and flip the switch that you want to use to arm and disarm the motors. Adjust the slider such that the little indicator is within the highlighted area. We'll use the three position switch to change between the acro, angle and horizon flight modes. Acro is not listed as a mode because it's the default mode. Set the range such that the quad is in angle mode when the switch is in its center position so that you can quickly switch to a stabilized mode from either acro or horizon. It's finally time to configure our motors. So go into the motors tab and select DSHOT 300 as the ESC protocol. Disable ESC sensor and enable bidirectional DSHOT and change the static motor idle from 5.5 to 15% if needed. Now click on motor direction and ensure that the motors are spinning in the same direction as shown in the animation. If a motor is not spinning in the correct direction, simply click on the forward or reverse button to change its direction. You can now check if all the four motors are functioning properly with the master motor slider. We can head over to the configuration tab and first disable the magnetometer since we are not using a compass. Let's enable RX lost, RX set and disable arming GPS fix, GPS status, black box series, crash flip, cam connection open, cam connection close and RC smoothing initialization failure. There's not a lot of changes to make under the pit tuning tab except to change the angle mode's maximum angle as per your personal preference. Enable thrust linearization, battery voltage sack compensation and change the acro trainer's angle limit. The default rates are pretty good to get started and we can also leave the filter settings untouched. Head over to the power and battery tab, set maximum cell voltage to 4.2 and warning cell voltage to 3.6. Now let's set up the fail safe by first changing the minimum pulse length to 925. Under channel fallback settings, change aux2 from hold to set and enter a value that lies within the range of your angle mode. Change failsafe switch action to stage 2 and set the stage 2 failsafe procedure to land. Enter a throttle value slightly below your hover point into the minimum throttle used while landing field. We are using a value slightly lower than hover to compensate for the wind's effect so that our quad doesn't shoot up instead of landing. We can skip the OSD, video transmitter, adjustments, GPS and servos tab and go into the black box tab to disable logging. Before exiting the app, let's go back to the setup page, lift our quad up and ensure that the animation is in sync with the movements. With this, we are officially done with the programming of our flight controller and our drone is one step closer to getting airborne. Let's mount the propellers on the motors, strap a battery on the top plate and finally put this machine to the test. In the upcoming video, we will carry out the FPV modifications. We'll also 3D print some cool accessories for our drone and add a GPS module for Henan safety. Last but not the least, we'll upgrade the radio link to ExpressLRS. So stay tuned and thank you for watching this video.